Welcome to the SVG TV News for Wednesday, April 22nd. I am Khalil Cato with the details. The World Bank activated 4.5 million US dollars on, when, on April 17th to provide immediate funding for SVG's response to the COVID-19 pandemic, aimed at strengthening the capacity of the health system. The World Bank's country director for the Caribbean, Tassin Syed, said they are working closely with SVG to help the health system prepare for the impacts of, of COVID-19 and to protect people, especially the most vulnerable. Syed said the financing will be used to improve the ability to isolate patients, increase testing capacity, and purchase critical supplies, including personal protective equipment, mobile isolation unit, testing equipment, reagents, gloves, and masks. It will also support the preparedness and response capacity for the other public health emergencies by increasing access to medical equipment and expanding the capacity of hospitals. These funds were mobilized under the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States OECS Regional Health Project using the Contingency Emergency Response Component, or CERC. CERC allows funds to be reallocated from the project to be used for emergency response activities. The World Bank Group is rolling out a 14, mil, a 14 billion U.S. dollar fast-track package to strengthen the COVID-19 response in developing countries and shorten the time for recovery. The Embassy of the Republic of China in Taiwan today handed over 40,000 surgical masks and six thermal imaging devices to the Ministry of Health, Wellness and the Environment. Speaking at the handing over today, Ambassador Calvin Ho said the donation of the masks is to ensure the country has enough to supply healthcare workers and other persons on the front line in the fight against COVID-19. In reference to the six thermal imaging devices, Ambassador Ho recommends that they be used at various points of entry and health institutions to help detect persons with a high temperature, which is one of the symptoms of COVID-19. Uh, according to our experience, I mean, these devices usually will be uh, deployed, set up uh, in airports, seaports, uh, or um, maybe hospitals or some uh, public uh, facilities. Um, mainly, um, its function is that for those frontline personnel uh, can monitor all the guests or passengers come into the public facilities, come into the door of your country, so that because, because always body heat is uh, uh, um, one of the good signs that we can judge people's health condition. The Taiwanese ambassador said his government and people will continue to support SVG in whatever way they can, including with its fight against COVID-19. I uh, hope it will be useful for your government. And um, in the future, our uh, support will um, continue uh, to come. Uh, uh, as I said, that uh, St. Vincent and Grandians are one of our best friends. And uh, we, we believe that, we, we deeply believe that um, um, all people, all countries, uh, I mean people in all countries should be entitled to good health. The, I mean, to reach that goal, we need to do it um, individually, by single country, uh, bilaterally, country and two countries. Minister of Health Luke Brown thanked the government and people of the ROC for the timely donation. Demonstrations being done very soon, and we're hoping that those demonstrations could be could be done in public. You may have the opportunity to come and see how these work. But we have thermal imaging devices that would help us in public facilities and elsewhere to check the temperature of persons. We know that one of the ways in which COVID-19 manifests itself is through elevated temperatures or fevers. This is when the body is trying its best to fight off an infection which may have taken place. So we recognize that the screening of body temperatures will be an important tool in our surveillance. The Taiwanese ambassador used the opportunity at the handing over ceremony to emphasize the importance of wearing face masks, which he said has helped his country in minimizing the spread of COVID-19. The ambassador and members of his team were all wearing masks at the ceremony at, held at the Foreign Affairs Conference Room. 
Ambassador Ho said the 40,000 masks donated to SVG are of a high quality. I actually I mentioned that the importance of put on uh, face masks and uh, um, that's according to our experience that we think that it's one of the effective way to prevent the spread out of this, uh, uh, this disease. It should, should be a very effective, uh, I mean, so, so I'm very, very glad that today we have uh, a good amount of these uh, face masks. This uh, face mask actually uh, is uh, at a very high I mean, quality. It's while acknowledging the importance of face masks, Minister of Health Luke Brown said his ministry is adhering to the World Health Organization's guidelines in their use. has been paying attention to the evolving advice from the World Health Organization on how you might use non-medical masks made of different material, including cloth, to contain spread. And in particular, the use of non-medical mask in that way and there will be technical specifications is recommended in settings where you cannot strictly abide by physical distancing so there is a a, a plethora a whole comprehensive advice comprehensive advice coming from the world health organization and other credible sources and we in st vincent we are not detached from these sources of advice we are plugged in and we will use the best information at our disposal to make sure that we protect the lives and the health of the vincentian public for the benefit of the public these things which we in normal times might take for granted could be the difference between life and death could be the difference between the transmission or the non-transmission of disease and there are several different types of surgical of masks. We, we have the surgical masks here and we receive a quantity of 40,000 of them from Taiwan. I don't want us to think that this is the this is the end all and be all of our mask supply because the truth is we would need masks on an ongoing basis to serve the demand in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Also at today's handing over ceremony, the health minister pointed out that in light of the flu season and COVID-19, there has been no increase in flu-like symptoms exhibited by persons across the country, as reported by a surveillance officer of the ministry. There has been no increase, generally speaking, in flu-like symptoms throughout the country. You know, we, we're dealing with specific matters related to COVID-19 and we are aggressively looking to track and detect cases and put them in isolation and see how we have to apply quarantine and other public health measures but in general there's no elevated level of flu-like symptoms and that is significant. Minister Brown further noted that heightened surveillance is being carried out and that they are in a better position to quickly identify any COVID-19 cases. If there were an elevated level of flu-like symptoms beyond the usual, it might indicate that they are undetected. There could be undetected COVID-19 cases in the country. So we're not seeing those elevated levels, notwithstanding the fact that we are practicing or carrying out enhanced surveillance. And that is a good thing. And we have a, a multi-pronged testing strategy available right now. On radio yesterday, Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzalez said while over the last few weeks SVG has seen a slowdown in the spread of COVID-19, persons should not become complacent and should, and should continue to follow the hygiene guidelines outlined by the Ministry of Health, Wellness and the Environment. Currently in place. And these include hand hygiene, cough etiquette, physical distancing of at least three to six feet in public spaces and strict adherence to quarantine and isolation mm -hmm. then this next sentence says these measures are vital if we are to continue to slow the spread of covid19 in st vincent and the grenadines if we are to continue to slow the spread that means that the health the chair of the health subcommittee and clearly that subcommittee itself and all those who are involved and advised by them mm -hmm. 
PM Gonzalez noted that after a person is tested positive for COVID-19, an investigation is done to ascertain whether the case is directly imported, import-related, locally transmitted, or community spread. He used the opportunity to explain the difference between the terms. That when you have a new case and you're doing the investigation, you would, you would be able to say usually fairly straightforwardly that a particular person might have come from overseas. Okay. That is a direct import. And then you have a category called import related. That is to say somebody who got it from somebody who came from overseas. Okay. And then you may well have, you may not know if that person is import related because you'd have to check to see whether they were connected with somebody who is import related mm -hmm. or whether it is somebody connected to somebody who is import related. Mm -hmm. Well, if the person is connected to somebody who is import related, it means that that would be local transmission. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, I understand as soon as this has come out, one news site has said, raised the question, is there community transmission in St. Vincent? It's only community transmission if you go beyond a sporadic to local right. and it's widespread enough, you see, it's community. community Outstanding payments to Arrow Root workers and farmers were scheduled to commence today. This was announced by Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzalez on radio last evening, who noted that the payments should have already been made, but that some public servants did not work as fast as they should have for the transactions to take place. I did all the checks today, the check-in. It's all the coordination has been done between finance, Agriculture, Minister of Agriculture, and the Accountant General. Yes. So I, I suspect that sometime tomorrow in the morning early, maybe nine o'clock or thereabouts, the check will go into the account of the Arut Industry Association and they'll be able to prepare the checks for the workers and for the the farmers. So I think that everything should be fine. As the coronavirus continues to create health and economic problems globally, persons are being encouraged not to forget about the natural environment. Today, April 22nd, is being observed as World Earth Day with a focus on environmental protection. Here in SVG, there is a National Environmental Day Committee comprising of stakeholders from various sectors and departments charged with the mandate of bringing awareness to environmental issues and creating a plan of action to address these issues. Climate Change and Natural Resource Management Officer with the National Parks, Rivers, Beach and Beaches Authority, Abena White, took the opportunity to remind persons of the threats posed by, that should be threats posed to the environment by climate change. The theme for Earth Day this year is climate action, and this has been specifically chosen in light of the challenges that countries face as a result of the impact of climate change. In St. Vincent and around the globe, we are constantly bombarded by threats posed by climate change in every sector, whether tourism, health, agriculture, and transport, by natural disasters, drought, sea level rise, climate-related diseases or human-induced activities. Activities such as pollution and deforestation have and will continue to exacerbate environmental conditions while increasing a vulnerability and the level of risk and threats on a country posed by climate change. White said despite the challenges posed by the coronavirus, persons can use technology to raise awareness about climate change and its impacts on the environment. By offsetting carbon emissions and reducing our carbon footprints, by investing in clean and renewable energy technologies, we can continue to promote sustainable development. 
Energy efficiency measures can also be practiced in homes by investing in high energy efficient appliances or switching to renewable energy. Despite the challenges faced by the coronavirus pandemic at this time, where public events and social gatherings are not possible, let us continue to raise awareness virtually, be educated on issues of climate change and the impacts on our vulnerable island state, and understand the role that we can play collectively as a nation to become more resilient against the impacts of climate change. Meanwhile, as countries worldwide grapple with the issue of food security, Vincentians are being encouraged not to destroy local mangroves. The mangroves are well known for their ability to protect the coastal communities from sea surges, to provide a nursery for a wide variety of fish species, as well as a home for some wildlife. Recently, a group from the National Parks, Rivers and Beaches Authority visited the Great Head Bay and Kanash Beach, where several mangrove trees were planted to help protect the coastline. Speaking with our news team from the Great Head Bay, where, where red mangroves and buttonwood trees were planted, park ranger with the authority, Sternley Walker, took the opportunity to highlight how effective this variety of mango, mangrove plant is in protecting the shorelines from erosion. As it grows from the trunk, you would have prop roots growing from the trunk and drop roots growing from the branches. And these roots would be growing out and as more roots grow out it's like the tree is moving and it's like it is growing in, into a cluster. And so when you have a forest of red mangrove, it is a dense forest. Hence it acts like a barrier. So when you have a strong surge coming in, beating against this thick, this dense forest of, of the red mangrove, it is able to slow down the impact of the water. That's why it is so important. And the tree is very strong. So it can survive all of those harsh movements and the harsh impact from the waves. And it will be able to protect the coastline. So by the time the water clears its way through the mangrove, the red mangrove, to meet land, you know, it is weakened. Walker said while these plants are useful for lumber as building material, they are endangered and encouraged persons to allow the plants to grow. When folks go to picnic, they would cut the limbs to cook, to roast their bread food and so forth. Okay, we want to discourage folks from doing that, please. When you come down to Kanash, we have some buttonwood there and we have some white and we have planted just a few of the red. And folks do do the same thing too. They would cut the branches for firewood. Some, of, some that we have fence, folks will go and destroy those. They would vandalize them, make them for seats and do all sorts of stuff. We also have some down at uh, Cyan Hill Bay. We have some of the white one there and the buttonwood. Okay, and, and you know, we're just appealing to everyone. These plants are very important, okay? While they are good for charcoal, for lumber, you know, they are very good. It's very hard wood because here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, you know, it's like these are endangered. And so we want to help re-establish them and to protect them. Many Vincentians rely on the marine space for food and livelihood creation, but this environment can be negatively but the environment can be negatively impacted by pollution. Walker said while the mangroves can help to prevent garbage from entering the marine space, it is the responsibility of all to dispose of their garbage properly. And right now I can see a bottle being washed down from upstream and it would end up nowhere else but into the marine environment. And it would be a problem for the living organism there. Now picture yourself at home lying on your bed among garbage. Picture yourself sitting in your sitting room among garbage. How would you feel? No one will feel comfortable. Just the same, the fish and the turtle, all the living organ organism. When garbage that we have used encroach into their environment, they cannot feel happy. And so, one of the things the mangrove does is it traps those litters. 
so they wouldn't end up there. But we don't want them to come down in the stream for the mangrove to trap them. We should take the responsibility to first manage and dispose of our trash, our garbage, so that they will not end up in the marine environment. Many people think when they throw their stuff, it will end up nowhere, but it doesn't end up nowhere. It, they all end up somewhere, and this somewhere usually is in the marine. And we want to make sure that we have clean water and we know how important water is for our survival. And the mangrove plant is one of those plants that help provide clean waters through the filtering system.